It's about time I do what I can to bring more attention to some underloved champions. This isn't a, these champions are underrated in this current patch video or any of that. These are the junglers I feel are underrated as junglers, usually due to either general inexperience or because players are simply being ignorant about them. These junglers aren't outlandish ones like Jungle Zyra or Jungle Talon or anything like that. They're realistic junglers who are undervalued. The word underrated has become a buzzword for people. They'll say any champion that is underused is automatically underrated or a champion people don't like is underrated. Tom is an underrated jungler or Nidalee is an underrated jungler and whatever. Some would say that but that's not always the case. Sometimes in situations like that, the players simply don't want to play the champion. They don't enjoy it and sometimes it's a very outlandish idea that is being given more credit than it actually deserves. In short, that's what overrated means, when you give something more credit than it deserves. When the champion is having their positives or what players believe are positives exaggerated and overblown while ignoring their negatives, that's what being overrated means. Underrated is the exact opposite, which is when players are denouncing a champion without fully comprehending the positives that they bring. This can even apply to overused and underused champions equally. Sometimes players could overrate even champions that are rarely played or considered lower tier. First up is Maokai. If some of you are shocked at this one, then you would understand how surprised I was that I got a lot of angry comments over praising Maokai in the last few videos. To some, Maokai is seen as this has-been jungler who can't do anything anymore. Admittedly, he is a jungler that carries by proxy, which for those that don't know, it means he can't carry by himself and only helps his team carry the rest of them. So in solo queue, he's a far less attractive pick. Maokai is one of the few junglers in the game that has a one-click death button. Targeted CC is seen as a luxury in the jungle, and he has one that's followed up by a low cooldown knockup and slow, and he can add an additional slow with his little Pikmin that he throws in the air. Not only that, but the tree is sustained and even has some of the highest early game damage for a tank. He can slug it out with a lot of early combatants. Literally, he was always the jungler you'd pick if you needed to go on a ganking frenzy. You walk up to lane, press W, and they're snared, and there was pretty much nothing they could do. His rework made his ganks a bit weaker CC-wise, but it was an improvement damage-wise. He's also a very powerful anti-caster champion, as his ultimate cuts the power of all abilities. This makes him strong against AoE compositions, makes him strong at early game pressure teams, and in engage compositions. He's seen mostly in top lane now, which I feel has knocked him down a few notches for people when it comes to consideration as a jungler. Regardless of that fact, he has plenty of benefits as a jungler that make him powerful. Again, he can't carry, so that also does taint people's outlook on him quite a bit, so it's understandable to an extent. Who would you say are the most sustained junglers in the game? Warwick and Fiddlesticks are the ones most people will think about because they heal back any damage they take, but there's one jungler who barely even gets hit in the first place. Yorick is probably the most sustained, at least health-wise, jungler in the entire game. His ghouls basically tank for him and can cheese the hell out of any objectives. He is always healthy and he won't lose duels because of his ghoul swarm and his passive. In my opinion, he's the safest jungler in the entire game. I'm not saying he's a god level jungler either, I'm just saying that it's practically impossible to die as Yorick even if you're half assing it. The reason I say he's underrated is because he's probably the only jungler anyone shit talked me for picking and I actually picked Zed and Zyra in rank before. Admittedly, Yorick doesn't gank very well and he's an expensive champion but his ultimate has the infinite value component to it. It's an immortality ultimate that revives a teammate and allows him to blast the enemy a bit longer. If you were to give it to someone like Vayne, then your team has a very good chance of straight out winning. As far as support junglers go, he can do well in the right compositions, mostly protect compositions, and he can crush people who seemingly underestimate him. I can't tell you how many Lee Sin, Jarvan, and Rengar jumped at me only to realize that the Ghoul Swarm isn't anything to fuck with. This is probably the most outlandish jungler on this list, but I feel he's probably the only jungler who's never adequately received credit for a long time, even when he's been played in competitive. Dr. Mundo has been getting a lot of flack in the video where I rank champions based on meta health. Here is the basic rundown. Most people feel he didn't deserve B rank because he isn't picked right now and because his ganking is meh, in comparison to a lot of champions at least. Unfortunately for them, B rank is exactly where he deserves to be. B rank was for junglers that are meta sensitive and he's a champion that excels in certain conditions. One person brought up that Dr. Mundo didn't excel in the Cinder Hulk meta, which shows apparently he's not a good jungler, but that's not how it works. Dr. Mundo isn't really a tank, he's this amalgamation of fighter and bruiser. A proto juggernaut if you will. Dr. Mundo is widely considered as one of the most cost effective junglers in the entire game. Junglers are usually poor and stark 
starved, so every bit of gold a jungler obtains has to be put to good use. Dr. Mundo excels here because his kit thrives on only building pure tank. The value of his gold is multiplied as his abilities scale based on his health. He becomes tankier with the health like anyone would be and his damage is sustained which becomes better the longer you survive in a fight. To make this a double whammy, he is one of the fastest junglers in the entire game. He farms up a shitstorm of gold quickly and can decimate objectives with his cleaver. His low gold requirement and extreme farming speed let him gear up fast and act quickly in the game. This means he fits metas that are really sped up and require map control and grouping early. His builds stay relevant as the game goes on as he just becomes harder and harder to kill. He is also one of the very few junglers in the game that actually has poke. His cleaver has a short cooldown, fast projectile speed and cast time. He can use it to kite or poke for days. He fits siege compositions perfectly as he doesn't have to awkwardly stand around like many junglers have to do in similar situations and he can help kite back if shit hits the fan. I cannot deny that there are some cons to him. As I said, he's meta dependent so he's not always going to crop up. In some cases, his lane is better as well. His poking exclusivity has been invaded by Nidalee and it will be a toss up between her and him whenever a jungler needs to be used for poke. For a lot of people, he's also simply not fun to play since he's not flashy or a playmaker. He brute forces things rather than making weedy fancy plays. Cho'Gath is yet another underrated jungler who I get slack for playing sometimes. He's the type of champion that pops up during meta shifts that favor him and pisses everyone off and they clamor for nerfs to him. And then the meta shifts away and they forget about him completely. During metas that favor combo champions or full engage compositions, he comes back and starts wrecking ass. He's a giant cockblock to champions like Katarina, Leblanc, Annie, Pantheon, and so on. As for his jungle, he's one of the least mobile in the entire game. However, he packs quite a bit of sustain and farming power and of course he becomes really powerful at objectives with his feast. To add to that, he's one of the few champions who adds health to themselves thus increasing their gold value. Again, I totally understand the grimace with his snail movement speed, but you can't really look at a champion with a long duration AoE silence, built in sustain for both health and mana with AoE clearing on his auto attacks, health stacking ultimate nuke, and ridiculous ratios and call him a bad jungler. Meta dependent for sure, and out of this meta definitely, but I can almost guarantee you he'll be back in some form when the meta shifts his way again. Number 1 is Zac. He was a god jungler when he was released and then Riot nerfed him and he's been gone ever since. He didn't stay in the spotlight for a long time which meant not a lot of people were encouraged to buy him or copy competitive. I think it would be safe to say that there are not many people who actually own Zac. He's a jack of all trades type of jungler who is not deterred by mana. He can fit in almost any composition and react to almost anything and he's generally safe and easy to clear with. It's almost criminal how some players denounce him as shit or underestimate him in game. In lane or jungle, players underestimate how hard he is to kill and how hard he can pin people down. You'll have players overcommit to fights with him only to find out Zac is out sustaining them or his passive baited them into death. You'll have players underestimate his sustain damage and pick fights they can't win. He's not the best at any one particular thing, aside from having no mana and being sustained, so he won't match the initiation of Malphite, the damage of Jarvan, or the mobility of Rammus or anything, but he can be number 2 behind all of them at once. Picking Zac lets you react to almost anything and support your team composition in multiple ways. He has long range initiation for ganks and teamfights, a displacement tool that allows you to control where it takes place for a few seconds, a revival passive, strong sustained damage, and also has a low gold requirement even amongst tanks. Like I said though, his biggest weakness is that he simply isn't the best at anything so sometimes a purist is just better. This is likely what will shove him out of contention in many situations. Still though, I couldn't recommend a safer and more gentle jungler than Zac. New players wouldn't be so easily punished as him and he'll teach them a lot while experienced players will pull off fancy plays with him. This channel is supported by my sponsors Crunchyroll, Pro Build Systems, and Loot Crate. Check out the description below for links to the websites. Signing up for any trials, including Crunchyroll's free anime trial, greatly supports my channel. Also remember to give the video a like to support the channel and subscribe if you haven't yet.